Welcome everyone to today's session, Small Business Doesn't Mean Small Security, Three Major Threats You Need to Combat. My name's Anita Campbell, and I'm the founder and CEO of Small Business Trends, and we are delighted to bring this session to you today, courtesy of Brevo. And Brevo has helped assemble uh, a security expert, uh, as well as a founder and entrepreneur of a small business who's here to talk about her experiences, if you will, with security and how she has addressed them. Uh, we will have questions at the end of today's session. We plan to go one hour in length and we will try to end promptly. Uh, please insert questions throughout the day uh, during this session in the little chat window. You should have a little chat window off to the right. Uh, look for the little orange button and you should be able to type in any questions that you have and that way our speakers will address them at the end. With that, I'd like to formally introduce our speakers today. First, we have Nikki Safel. Nikki, tell us about you. Hi, so I am a senior security consultant at Brevo. I've been with Brevo for four years. And I've held several positions within the security industry on the integrator side, as well as now Brevo on the manufacturing side. And I'm so excited today to share this information with you on security threats to small business. Well, that's great, Nikki, and I'm sure you've got a lot of great experience to share with us, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Sarah Polin of Supergirl. Sarah, tell us about your background. Thank you, Anita. Yes, my name is Sarah. I'm the founder of Supergirl. Uh, I founded my business in 2008, delivering soup, homemade, delicious, healthy, soup to people's homes and offices. And fast forward to 2018, uh, you can find our healthy, kosher, vegan, delicious soups up and down the East Coast in Costco and Whole Foods, uh, Peapod and our own retail locations. And I'm really excited to share my experiences with uh, security and access control with you all today. Okay, so today we're going to go over the three threats facing small businesses. We're going to look at Supergirl as well as solutions, benefits, and questions. Okay. Um and uh, Nikki, I believe we've got a poll. Uh, is it time to take our poll? Yes, so we'll go ahead and put a poll question up for you guys. All right. So our poll question is up. Uh, please look for the little window. Please vote in the poll. Um, we'd love to, uh, you know, have you take just 15, 20 minutes seconds here. Uh, keep voting. Thank you very much. Awesome. Love seeing those votes come in. We'll give it just a few more seconds. Make sure everyone has a chance to vote. Okay, I'm going to end the polling and we have the results. So uh, Nikki, here are the results. Definitely shows here that it is a top priority for everyone. Everyone's thinking about the threats that are facing small businesses and what they can do to combat these threats. So we'll go ahead and get started here with the presentation. So there's many threats that small businesses face every day. These threats have evolved as business has grown and the threats have become more sophisticated. Today we're going to look at three security threats facing small businesses and what they could cost you. The first topic we're going to look at is employee turnover. How many times in the last three years have you rekeyed? Now how many times in the last three years should you have rekeyed but didn't? You should rekey after an employee loses a key, 
if an employee quits without returning assigned keys and after terminating a key holding employee. On average, rekeying costs $100 plus $25 per door. If you're rekeying as often as you should, with a high employee turnover rate, rekeying costs could really add up. Not rekeying, though, can have many unaccounted for, or having many unaccounted for keys floating around could be far more costly. Think about a recently terminated employee. Would you want them continue have access to your business? The threat of theft and potential violence exists. The more keys that exist, the higher the risk of theft and unauthorized access. Whether keys were lost by accident or never returned after an employee left, the keys are still out there. This leads us to our next threat facing small businesses, unauthorized access. Unauthorized access to your business can have a lasting impact. Think of your main entry points, as well as all the areas where you keep valuable inventory or computers with sensitive and confidential information. Restricting access to sensitive information and ensuring the integrity of inventory is critical to keeping your business secure. There are only certain people you want in those areas, and there are probably only certain times those areas should be accessible at all. Most businesses don't operate 24 hours a day. You want to restrict when your doors are open and to who. And any access during a certain period of time, for example, 3 a.m., is unauthorized access. Right now, how do you know if anyone was in your space during an unauthorized time? The risk of unauthorized access can lead to our next major threat, which is th What impact can theft have on your business? Inventory loss, damage to your property, or the lasting effects of data being compromised. Theft can also happen externally, meaning it's perpetrated by a non-employee, or internally, meaning employee theft has taken place. What can this cost you? First, the actual money, or if inventory is stolen, that inventory is gone. How much money have you invested in inventory that's sitting in an unsecured room? What is the impact on your business if some of it were to disappear? What would happen if a computer was stolen with customer information or your information? It could also lead to identity theft. We've heard many news stories of compromised data due to unauthorized access. Incidents like these can be devastating to small businesses. So we introduced Sarah Pullen a little bit earlier, but we're going to go ahead and bring her on to speak about some of her challenges. Sarah, thank you for joining us today. We're going to look at some of the challenges that you have faced as a small business owner. Sure, thanks for having me. So the first challenge we wanna look at is employee turnover. Can you explain the challenges you faced when dealing with employee turnover? Absolutely, Nikki. Employee turnover is, is a huge problem for a small business owner when it comes to security. First of all, like you mentioned, rekeying is a big problem. Um, sometimes employees quit formally, we can collect their keys, disable their alarm code, but quite often people will simply not show up for work. Uh, and then we have to hunt down that key or, as you mentioned, rekey the lock every single time. And if you have multiple doors, it becomes very costly very quickly. Also, sometimes people forget their alarm codes, they share their alarm codes, and so we literally have no way of knowing who has shared whose alarm code, who made a copy of their key and gave it to someone else. There's just certain things you don't have control over. And this is just a really big problem for a small business owner who can't afford to constantly be changing the keys or hire 24-hour security staff. Um, so definitely a big challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. And another challenge you faced is not only knowing, you know, who has keys or who's in your building, but also what challenges have you faced with contractors and delivery people, the people that you want to have in your building? 
So this is a, another big challenge for a small business owner. Quite often, we have contractors scheduled to come at times where we're not producing, we don't have staff there, and that's, that's really the best time for a contractor to come. But because um, you, need so, you don't want to give contractors keys or alarm codes, you have to pay someone to head down to the facility, wait there, let them in, and sit there with them until the job is done, sometimes it can take all day, and then lock up after they go. So this is a really big problem for a small business owner where either I have to do it or I have to pay someone to do it. And even if I had a trusted contractor, I just can't have random keys and alarm codes out there. Um, so it's another big challenge for a small business owner. Absolutely, absolutely. And as a small business, you do tend to share spaces especially in and around the DC area. Can you explain some challenges you've had with sharing workspaces? Yes, absolutely. So we have our own kitchen facility that is, we need to keep entirely secure. But then to save a little money, we have shared common area spaces, shared offices, shared bathrooms, shared storage area. But I don't know all of the people that are sharing the space with me. I don't know all of the employees of other companies. I certainly don't know their security protocol. I don't know who they're giving their keys to. So in an ideal world, if I've somehow managed to track all of my keys and all of my alarm codes, I have no idea what's going on with them. And because I'm now supplying Whole Foods and Costco and I have extremely strict food safety standards, this became a very big problem where how is, it, how is I going to secure my facility, comply with these security standards, and still save money while having some shared spaces? So definitely a big challenge for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely challenges that had to be addressed. And what made you choose access control to help you address some of those challenges? Um, it really seemed like the only way to properly secure the space, considering all those challenges I, I, I discussed, going with a traditional key and alarm code solution just was not going to work for my circumstances. And I needed something that was cost effective, that was going to save me time, that was going to save me money, um, and make me feel even more secure. And so access control was the logical solution right from the start. Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the biggest challenges that you had was employee turnover. Can you tell us a little a little bit about how access control made revoking employees in your system easier? Oh, yes. That basically, those problems I discussed disappeared the minute I um, set up our access control system. If an employee was no longer working for us, I just deleted from the them from the system and they were no longer able to get in. There's no sharing keys. There's no alarm codes. They literally no longer have access. And that just That's saved me so much time and so much money. I also was really happy with um, uh, the ability to grant access to delivery people and contractors remotely. So a great example um, is our electrician. He is a trusted contractor. He likes to come very, very early in the morning. And I don't want to have to pay my staff to, again to wait there. He's passed our security protocol. We trust him. So uh, one time I was at a meeting in New York City and I literally let him into our facility remotely from my hotel in New York and it couldn't have been easier and then he followed all security protocol no one needed to be there with him no one needed to lock the door after him because it automatically locks and this also works well for deliveries um, sometimes we don't know who's up front uh, requesting access to make a delivery because we're in the back cooking soup and so someone can call from outside and say, hey, I'm here, and I can give them access just to the delivery dock. I can let them in just to the delivery dock so they can leave whatever packages they need to and not have access to the rest of the space. So I've let them in, I've received the delivery, I didn't miss the delivery, but my place is still secure. So that's been perfect for us. That's fantastic. So the access control system let you set up different layers of access control, which helped with, you know, sharing workspaces, allowing you to monitor who's coming and going. Yeah, the shared workspace was also, I don't really see how any other solution could have worked. Um, because we do, we give 
access to everybody who's sharing the workspace, access to just the workspace. But there's a second layer when it comes to my secure kitchen and only my staff can get back there with their IDs on, with their you know, proper security protocol and proper food safety protocol. That's all complied with because only my staff can get into my secure kitchen area. But we know who's coming in and out of the shared space because we also have access control there, but we have the peace of mind of knowing that what if someone from the shared space leaves the dock open? What if they prop a door open? What if they let some random person in? Not great, but at least I know my, my second layer, my kitchen is secure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sarah, that was very insi insightful. So you currently have access control in your production facility and you're looking to add it to your retail location. Can you talk about the unique challenges to your retail location that prompted you to want to expand your access control solution there? Absolutely. It's, first of all, I have all of the uh, or many of the challenges that we discussed, employee turnover, um, temporary access, but also because I have a traditional alarm, I can't tell you how many times I've been woken up at three o'clock in the morning and I don't know why the alarm's gone off. And so I have to rush to my location in the middle of the night to find that during a snowstorm, uh, a truck had, had uh, hail had hit the, had hit the window or a pot, you know, the, the ground had shook because of a big storm and a pot fell over. And so the alarm went off, the police were called, and for absolutely no reason. And that has just been terrible. <laughs> and it happens more often than you think. And, you know, I just want to get access control, A, for employee turnover, and B, for peace of mind. I can just log in, see what's going on at my retail locations, and know I'm not going to have to run there at 3 o'clock in the morning or in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That definitely seems like access control with video would benefit you in the retail space as much as it's benefited you at your production facilities. Indeed. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the best ways to address security challenges for small businesses. So access control allows you to automate your access and your schedules. So in a retail setting like Sarah's, she has the ability, she can unlock during normal business hours. So that front door opens up at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning and it's gonna close down at 10 o'clock at night when it shuts down. It also allows her to create schedules granting people access to the production facility as well as through to the retail center. That's all done in the same system. So you're not managing multiple schedules for multiple facilities. You also can receive alerts on your mobile device or via email for any unexpected events. So those 3 a.m. phone calls from the alarm company, you're also going to receive a text message if someone did in fact violate security protocol and go through a door. Also has the ability to show any reporting on access control. So being able to see who's coming into the space and when, if you, you know, hey, why were you here at three o'clock in the morning? It's not really a normal time for you to be here. It allows you to pull reports and see all of that data. As Sarah spoke earlier about unlocking a door remotely. Mobile management is key to running a business. You're not always there, but you wanna have eyes on your business. It reduces the keys and key cards. You can use your mobile device to unlock a door. You can give temporary access to certain individuals using their email address, allowing them to use their phone to get into your facility. And Sarah, we spoke a little bit about your experiencing your experience with you know letting the delivery driver in. Do you have any experience using your mobile phone or your mobile device for access control management? 
Yeah, the mobile solution is great. It takes uh, no time to add a new user. You just uh, set them up very quickly in the backend system, send them a link, they download it, you decide what access they have, and it's done. You don't need to go find them a key, you don't need to get set up their alarm code, it literally takes 30 seconds, and you don't need an instruction manual, it's intuitive to use, you don't need to explain it to someone, and it's so easy, I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic, I'm so glad it's made a difference for you. Video surveillance is another important feature of access control. You get a f alarm company calling you saying there's been a false alarm or you have someone coming through your door. It allows you to have a visual record of who came in that door or even to look in to your facility via your mobile device and see if you know it was a pot that fell over or if it really is somebody coming in and be able to dispatch the police accordingly. It also allows you to tie events to doors. So if you wanted to see exactly, you know, from your device, people coming in and out, you can quickly see video as well as the directory of who's coming in. Identity-based access. This is where access control really improves upon the lock and key. You can create and change permissions, but more importantly, you can create groups. This is going to allow you to say, these people can come into this store at this specified time. So maybe you have you know, a business and everyone has standard access, but then the building has a cleaning crew that comes in and only has the access from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. You, you give them keys that authorizes them to come into your space and clean between the hours of 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. If that card is used at any point other than the authorized hours, it will send you an alert saying this card was read, access was denied, meaning they didn't have access to your building. And this is great, you know, with Sarah's space as well, you know, she shares a space, she wants to section off who can go into her specific space, but also who can go into the, the delivery spaces, having groups and being able to manage custom access, not only, you know, in the shared space, but also in the retail locations is a big improvement over issuing keys or having to send people to other locations to unlock doors for people. Some of the main features and benefits of access control, it's affordable. High level security is now within reach for small businesses. We have many packages that can meet most budgets, whether it's one door or two doors or 20 doors, 100 doors, we can definitely find a package that's suitable for you. As Sarah has mentioned, it's very easy to manage whether it's on your mobile device or from your laptop. You log in, you don't have to download any software, you don't have to have any special programming, you go to your browser, you log in, and you have access to all of your data. With Brevo's fully scalable, you can start off with one door at one location, and then in six months, you want to add a second location with more doors, or even if you want to add more doors at your existing location, the system's going to grow with you. You don't have to try to future-proof it or plan, am I going to need eight doors in five years, or you know, is my software going to be outdated? Everything constantly is updating and allowing you, when you go to make any upgrades or add any doors, all of your old system is going to still be compatible with your new system. We heard Sarah mention peace of mind. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more about how access control has alleviated some of your worries with security? Yeah, it's, it's night and day. Um, I, I've been used to an alarm and code system for so long, I, I didn't even know that this type of solution was available. And now that I've implemented it in our, in our production facility, it's, it's just a different security experience. I literally have no worries about the security 
of my facility. I don't worry about keys. I don't worry about who's going in and out. If I'm worried at all, I log in and I see who's gone in and out, what time, when. I can pinpoint problem areas. Um, it solved my issues with shared space. I don't know how I would actually run my business without it. it it's, it's a game changer for me. And that's why I'm going to add it to our retail locations as well, because I'm just spending too much money rekeying, chasing down keys, coming here in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's just not worth it. And um, it's, it's really a no brainer for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with, there's 10 million users that feel the same way as you do. Um, yeah. You know, we've been entrusted to secure their properties, their valuables, and we've been serving them for over 20 years. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your time. I'm going to go ahead and open this questions. All right, so we're going to take some questions now. Um, but first, while we're waiting for questions to come in, we're going to put up a, one last little poll. And so everyone can feel free to add their questions in either the chat or the Q&A section. Okay, poll is coming up. <clears throat> All right, we've got another poll uh, that should be up on your screen there. So please take a moment. Uh, the question is, are there plans to acquire an update access control? So, you know, what are your plans? How, how soon are you looking at it? And I think this raises a good question while people are, are responding to the poll also. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from uh, either uh, Nikki or Sarah on this, and that is, you know, how long does it take and, and should it take to actually uh, research a security solution and what should you be doing to research one? All right, with that, uh, would you like me to share the results right now or wait on that? Let's wait on that. Let's start taking some questions. Um, Nikki, did you want to answer what uh, Anita was talking about as far yes. as so researching? As far, as far as researching the systems, it really can take you, you know, a month or two. It could take you up to six months, depending really on the scope of your project and what features and benefits you want to receive from that. Um, at Brevo, we do offer demos of our system. So if you do want a demo, you can reach out as well. Um, but it's really, it really depends on what you're looking for. And some of the things that you really should be looking for is what is the, you know, cyber security protocol for the data, especially if you are putting it in the cloud, you're putting all of your data in the cloud, you want to know that the company has good cyber hygiene and that your data is going to be safe. You also want to compare features to what your needs are. Do, are you going to have multiple locations? Are you going to want it all to tie together? Or do you want to be, you know, entering in data at one location and then having to drive across town and enter in data in a second location? So really, how are you going to use the system? You know, what is your budget? And, you know, that all of those things, you know, could take, you know, a month or two, it could take up to six months. And, you know, we're definitely here to help answer any questions or, you know, any system design like that, you can always reach out to us. Okay, and kind of along your question, uh, uh, your answer about the cloud and multiple facilities, we've got a question in that asks, can this be used internationally? it absolutely can be used internationally. So anywhere where you have an internet connection, we have dealers and partners internationally all over the globe. Um, we can have some in the United States, have some in Spain, have it in you know Mexico. 
really wherever you're doing business, we're doing business and we can get you connected. We understand international shipping as well as international installs through our partners. Okay, next question. Do you recommend having a security list for when someone leaves a company? If so, what should be on the list? Um, so I guess we could ask this question in two ways. One, if you don't have access control and one, if you do. So if someone leaves and you are using lock and key, for instance, what's the best way to secure, keep your business secure as people are leaving with keys and what's the best way to keep your business secure once if you have access control? What are the steps to take when someone leaves? So with keys, you're more on the honor system than not. And that means that they hand you a key, but you have really no way of knowing that they didn't go and make a copy of that key for themselves or for their friend prior to handing you back the key that you issued to them. And with access control, that fear is eliminated, whether they give you back the card, the fob, or, you know, a mobile, a mobile credential. Once you turn off that credential, they can't get back in, even if they still physically have the card or the fob to try to get in the door. And what it's going to show you is it's going to show you that they did, in fact, try to use their credential to get back through the door. Okay, next we've gotten a couple questions on implementation process. You know, how, how hard is it to get access control set up and running? So with your dealer, once the system design is complete, if you have an existing outdated access control system or if you have lock and key, you have the ability to get all of your users, groups, and your doors set up prior to install even happening. So really all of that could be done through our user interface, making sure that everyone is assigned their credential, making sure that everybody's in their correct groups, and then the dealers can come in and you know the technicians install the panel on the wall. Once it plugs in, it connects to the Brevo cloud and it knows that, hey, I've communicated, it reaches out, and that links the secure connection, all of the data that you've put into your user interface is going to push down to the panel and allow that to populate and your doors to work. So it's a fairly easy install. There's not a lot of downtime. If you do have an existing access control system, we can run in tandem with that while the install is happening. Um, and then with a traditional lock and key, it's gonna go from you know, having a key to open your door to having a card reader to open your door. And we always recommend still having a key override. So you, you know, still going to have that one master key secured somewhere that, you know, if something does happen, you still have a key to get in. Okay. Uh, now we got some for Sarah. Um, so we, We've got a question on what um, has improved most in your business day to day since implementing access control. Um, on a day to day level, I, I it's um, I guess just peace of mind. I'm not there. I'm I'm at. We have uh, three different locations, and I can't be at all of them at once. And so I know that at where I have the access control system set up it's secure because I try to be at my other two locations as much as possible because it's an old fashioned alarm system and we have had some serious problems it, it, with, with turnover. And um, I'm not necessarily confident that everything is totally secure here. We're actively disabling alarm codes and I'm the only one with the master code. So I have to be the one to go from location to location and reset things and start over. And so with the access control system, I don't have to worry about that. Um, and that's why I'm just really ready to, to turn my retail locations over to the system as well. Excellent, thank you. Um, all right, we've just got another question. What should small medium business owners do to ensure that they have addressed cyber and physical security holistically? 
Nikki. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so you're definitely going to want to cyber and physical security holistically. You're definitely going to want to make sure that your physical space is secured as well as you've done your research on whatever company you're trying to use, make sure that they have, you know, audit reports that they can produce. Um, most of those you're going to have to sign an NDA, but the business should be willing to produce any audits that they've done as far as cybersecurity or provide you with any white papers um, discussing all of the cyber hygiene and everything that goes into keeping data in as a and then physically, you want to make sure that you have re-key Make sure that there's no duplicates of any master keys. That everybody under your security protocol is and follows through. Okay. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, next question, how does the system operate in case of an internet outage? That's a great question. So if the internet goes down, the system is going to, the panels are going to retain the last known data that it received from the internet. So what that means is that you've entered in everything through your user interface online. The panel has updated everything is going to continue to work. So if the internet goes down, your system is going to work as a standalone system. The panel is going to buffer all of that data that's coming in while it's still trying to reach back to get online. As soon as it regains connection, it's going to resync that data. All right. Um, can you expand on scalability? Um, how easy is it really to add locations and doors to the system? Sure. So I'll use Sarah as an example here. She's got a few doors at her production facilities, and she's going to add a retail location. So she's already has the framework built, meaning that she has all of her users. She has all of her groups. So at the new retail facility, it's going to be putting a panel on the wall, having it communicate with the Brevo cloud and going into all of the existing groups and adding that door to those groups. And then all of those users are already attached to those groups. So they're just going to fall right in line. So really on, you know, the technician who's doing the install is just going to go in and fix is going to sync that door up to that it needs to follow, it's going to give access to the people that it needs access. So again, you know, you start, but you know for sure you need additional doors. You know, downloading any software, sure that everything is good. It's already updated. It's already good. All she has is online and her system will fully integrate. Okay, great. Um, and what kinds of reports can an, can a can a user get from the Brevo uh, platform? So there's many different types of reports that you can run. You can run reports if you want to see who's logged in and who's made changes to the system. So you can run what we call a journal report, which is going to show what they did when they logged in, you can run reports on activity. So we have gyms that are small businesses and they like to see reports that, you know, really show them how many people entered the facility, you know, between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m., you know, and that helps them with how they staff and helps them make business decisions on hours, you know, what are their peak times? What are their staffing needs? So you can run reports on, you know, people who are coming through the doors. You can also run reports on individuals. So if you want to see if this person is, you know, where they say they're going to be, you know, they need to swipe through a specific door to get into their workspace. 
Are they actually still in the workspace? You can run reports on groups to see who's in certain groups. You can really, I mean, there's hundreds of reports that you can run and it's all customized within the Brevo user interface. And once you run a report that you like, you can schedule that report so that it runs automatically. So if you have a specific report that you like to look at every week on Monday morning, you can set the system up so that on Monday morning, it emails that report to you and you can review that report. All right, um, I've got one for Sarah. Um, you mentioned you have multiple locations. How many employees do you have? We're curious to see what different sizes of business uh, Brevo works for. Uh, I, I have around 35 employees. Um, not all of them are full-time. Okay, great. Um, one more for you, Sarah. What are your favorite features of the system? I think the remote access uh, has, has been, really been a game changer for us. It's, um, it, it, it allows us to just letting the deliveries in, letting the contractors in, not having to make sure someone is there at ungodly hours, enabling work to get done when we're not producing. So it just gives us that flexibility has just really been um, so helpful to us. All right. Um, well, I don't see any additional questions coming in. So I think, Anita, I'll hand it over to you uh, to, to wrap it up. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And with that, um, I want to share the results of our little final poll here. So there you have the results. Um, is that about what you expected? Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people doing a lot of research. That's fantastic, and I'm happy to help answer any you know, additional questions that you have um, or provide any demos or anything to you know, help with that research. So, Nikki, if, uh, if there's a way to, for people to reach out, how, what's the best way to reach out? Is, there, um, is it by phone? Is it by email? Is there a particular forum on your site? What would you suggest? Yep, so if they go to brevo.com, they can request a demo or request a chat with an expert. So really, there's a few different options. And also, uh, brevo.com will direct you to, you know, sales at brevo.com or any other, you know, information that you want. We have a lot of white papers as well as information sheets, case studies, all of that can be found on the website. But if you want to schedule a demo or have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time, you know, select the option of chat with an expert and fill out that form. And that'll send it over to our team and we will get somebody who can help you and have a discussion regarding your specific needs. All right, that's fantastic. Uh, so uh, yeah, brevo.com, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Brevo.com. So uh, remember that, Brevo.com, and go to the website, uh, check it out. Um, I do encourage people to research. It looked from the answers as if uh, people were really starting pretty early to research. Uh, some of you were looking at, uh, you know, six to 12 uh, months out. And, uh, you know, I do think it's fantastic that Brevo has made materials available for people to do their research. That's fantastic. And, and uh, I absolutely encourage people to, uh, to dig in and find out. Uh, with that, uh, is there anything else, uh, Nikki or Sarah, that uh, you want to add that we haven't covered today? Or are we all concluded? I think we are concluded. Indeed. Okay, well, you guys have been great. I do want to tell everyone that the recording of today's session uh, will be available uh, and will be provided afterwards. Uh, if uh, anybody, um, you know, has uh, any uh, questions, again, go to the website, brevo.com. And with that, I believe today's session is now ended. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.